Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our new Arabic lesson that's Arabic alphabets. This is a very basic lesson and you need to learn these alphabets and learn these letters, how to pronounce them, the way to write these letters in Arabic language and the way they change the pronunciation when they come together. So we'll start with a new lesson that's a fundamental lesson of Arabic language that's Arabic alphabets. You can join us on Facebook also and you can note my address Bukhari Hamid 786 at the rate of gmail.com so we'll start with a new lesson very fundamental lesson that's Arabic alphabets as you know there are 28 different letters in Arabic. So dear students, you may come across different literature or different authors who agree that there are 29 letters you may read in some books or there are 30 letters. So the first letter as when we study the Tajweed or when we study Abjad we come across the letters or the numbers of Arabic. So the first letter in Arabic alphabetical system is Alif. So in English we have the phonetic system. You can say if we say this is A and this is Li, this is I and this is F. This is Alif. Alif. This is a central vowel system. So we don't have exact transliteration or exact transcription in English phonetic system but we'll go according to English phonetic system because most of the students they are well acquainted with English phonetics. So this is the first letter that's Elif and how to write it that means you have to start from the top and then come down there so it comes to be the first letter the letter Elif the letter Elif you must be aware about that the letter alif and hamza letter alif and hamza they have the identical sounds they have the identical sounds hamza and i will just write here alif hamza they have the identical sounds they have the identical sounds identical sounds and alif sometimes it's never considered as a letter and sometimes you may come across uh, the definitions like that it's a weak letter it's a weak letter why you uh, weak consonant or weak letter why you think that it's a weak letter because when you take the uh, pronunciation when you take uh, into account the vowel sounds you may see that letter alif letter alif gives length gives length gives length to fata gives length to fatha that means fatha as you know this is the sound which is there on the top and kasra is another sound that's there underneath any alphabet and dhamma is like this so it gives the length to this very uh, fata this very vowel sound so sometimes we call it a long vowel so alif we uh, we know it with a long while long while so we'll recapitulate in uh, recap recapitulate uh, what we read till now that uh, alif is the first letter or the first alphabet in arabic alphabetical system then we have uh, also uh, read uh, that alif is considered sometimes an identical sound with hamza it's also a weak letter it's also a weak letter and uh, it's letter it gives length to fatha it gives length to a vowel sound that sometimes uh, we come across literature where we read about this as it's a long vowel it's a long vowel dear students learn also that when when haraka 
is on letter Alif or underneath it for example this is if we say this is harka or we say this is underneath it we never call it that time it is alif but it's alif hamza it's alif hamza so uh, you may come across uh, the books where you see sometimes like this where you see sometimes like this so you have to remember that this is then alif hamza and when it's without any vowel sound without any short vowel sound uh, without any short vowel sound we simply call it alif we simply call it alif so when harka is on letter or it becomes that times we can say that it's sometimes the carrier and uh, sometimes it's alone there and it's defined that time as alif and sometimes with a carrier it's hamza it's hamza so what does it mean that uh, when there is hamza when it's the carrier of this very sign uh, we call it hamza see w oh, what actually we mean by it as alif it is never it is never the first letter it is it is never the first letter of a word first letter of a word you never see in Arabic language that alif is the first letter of the word so the word never starts with alif but you can see there if it starts there what we have the wrong notion are the Arabian people they are well aware about it but the people who are non-Arabians they should al always remember that the word may generally the word may generally the word may generally start with start with Hamza start with Hamza that's why we call uh, we call here you may see alif there but that's actually hamza we may come across the different types of hamza tul wasl or uh, another type there so here we will stick only to the information of the first alphabet that's alif among the 28 letters this letter alif it has been originated or the genesis of this letter alif is from the phoenician Phoenicians, Phoenician alphabetical system. As letter alif, it came to the language and it was uh, borrowed, or sometimes you may call anything, whatever you read that, uh, as a consonant, as a consonant, consonant, which stands for the glottal stuffs. Glottal stuff. Glottal stuff. You will come across these uh, definitions later in the course will make you understand what does this mean what actually consonant means and what actually what else sound means in general what we know the consonant vowels in english for english students they know that vowels are those sounds vowel sounds are those sounds when we um, produce the vowel sounds there is no obstruction there is no obstruction of the exhaled breath obstruction of oh exhaled breath exhaled breath what does that mean this exhaled breath that means we don't stop it neither we uh, touch the parts of mouth neither we touch the lips neither we uh, touch the tongue with the roof or uh, with the teeth uh, we don't touch them we don't stop the breath that's a wild sound and when the sound produced and the breath is stopped by lips or any intervention is there we call that sound consonant sound we call that sound consonant sound so dear students you may not be confused uh, we will take the help of English language to make you understand where we, f we find the need to do that. So here, uh, as Phoenicians, it was brought as, uh, it, it will, its function was as a consonant, but today, almost it has lost its function. And today we know this elif, we know this elif, including wow and yay, these two wow and yay, uh, Wow and yay are in English. Uh, you can 
represent it like this it's yay sound yay sound or wow sound these are together more familiar and more known as long vowels in arabic long vowels in arabic that means alif which we introduced today the lecture about alif that it serves as a long vowel there are three long vowels in arabic language and there are two three uh, short vowels in arabic language so its greater function is to give length to short vowel that's fata and give it length and it becomes then a long vowel what we read about alif we can summarize that here see this is alif so we will uh, do one thing you will mark it and just do one thing like this this arrow this arrow this one and this one so this is first number here i will say alif in different forms to summarize what we read alif in different forms the first form is vowel form vowel form now the second one is weak letter form weak letter form and the third one is here i will write here hamza form hamza form and if i do one thing i will write here consonant form consonant form so look into this very word so there are four different forms generally oh uh, what we summarize as per our own method that alif there is this is a vowel form and then alif this is a weak letter form and then alif this is uh, what we have here hamza form and then alif this is here consonant form this is here consonant form as we uh, read about vowel form that this very form of alif it either you can see it in the middle of a word in the middle of a word middle of a word or it's number one and number two is generally at the end and you'll never see this very form in the beginning never in the beginning never in the beginning so uh, the first form uh, of the elf that's vowel form either in the middle of the word you can observe it or you can see it as when you go across different lessons you'll see yourself and at the end generally there and never in the beginning this was the vowel form this was the vowel form either we can say the long vowel form if we just see in the middle or if we see in uh, at the end we can say uh, this one this is ba this is ba and this is at the end here this is not a word here and if we say in the middle here this is bob see this is the middle there this is the vowel form there in the middle and here at the end you can say sometimes uh, if you do have the word there you can say like um huma there and some other words also as a well we shall also know that any alphabet any letter to which ali follows for example i give the example here bab or babun here the alif follows and this ba proceeds to this letter so as to to your account to the information to your account that you should always know that whenever alif is there and any letter proceeds it that letter has fatha that letter has fatha and it serves as a long vowel so it becomes babun so you can take any example you cannot say here you cannot say here babun you cannot say babun 
So you have to say that Babun hair is fata. Here we gave you the information about wall form. When you grow old or when you'll grow uh, when you'll be more strong in Arabic language, Arabic conversation or Arabic understanding, understanding of words, you will ever you yourself understand if there are little differences and you will uh, understand the weak letter form, consonant form. In actual sense, in English, what we call a long while, that's the English term given to this very alif when it is preceded with fata. But here we can say if we, uh, some may challenge and you'll come across this information also there that the consonants, for example, here is the consonant form or weak letter form. See, when there is a lift, if it's a weak letter or the consonant form, it's not fully consonant there, then only we can say it's vowel. There are two cases. If it's fully a consonant, we can't say that it's a vowel. If we say that it serves as a weak letter or a weak form of consonant, then only we can say it serves as a vowel. So we can also say this that the vowel alif we give length to it or it helps in giving length to fata. So instead of saying long vowel, you can also say the lengthening letter which gives length. So you shall not be confused here. As Hamza form, as you know, we have uh, told already there, this is the Hamza form now. When alif is uh, alif, ha alif has this very fata or three signs of this or this this sign this sign or this sign under this very or above it we can say that this is Hamza form which is Hamza form so you shall not be confused you shall not get confused that now it's very easy that royal form uh, weak letter form when the alif is not fully consonant form not strong consonant as it was in the beginning but it has lost now it is function then only we can say it is a long while or uh, mistakenly long while but to make you understand or uh, to make understand that it gives length or then we have consonant form and then we have Hamza form that when it has uh, these short vowels under it or above it, we have this form. This is called Hamza form. Now coming to another aspect that when Alif, which serves as a long vowel, comes at the end. Now there is Alif, which serves as a long vowel. This very alif, if it serves as a long while, it gives length and it comes at the end of a word, at the end of a word. We can say here, if you can also write if it comes at the end or a word it is written ya yeah. it's written ya yeah. this very elif is written ya yeah. if it comes at the end of a word and serves as a long while it is written as that now uh, coming to uh, summarization point Summarization. No, we'll first see uh, some more characteristics of Aleph and then we'll go through the summarization of it. As you know that the way to articulate, the way to articulate any sound is very important to any language. It's very important to any language, whether it is English, whether it is Arabic, whether it is Aramic, whether it is Urdu or any other language. See the way to articulate as we are dealing with Alif. So there are three different points in throat 
when we are counting throat, it starts from mouth. It starts from mouth. If we uh, count here, this is mouth, for example, up here. If it starts right here, then there is pharynx, larynx, there are vocal cords then. So uh, this very deepest part of this throat is near to chest. And the middle part is there, it's right here, and the closest part is near to mouth. Near to, this is closest part. And middle part is exactly the middle of this closest part and the part which is near to chest. And there are two uh, letters are pronounced when we, uh, when we take the example of this very part, deepest part of the throat. What are these two alphabets, alphabic, uh, Arabic alphabets? One is this and one is this. This is Hamza and this is Ha. You don't have exactly there in English as if we see a ha in English it is pronounced and its position there is very above where we produce ha there in Arabic language. It's there above near to mouth there when we produce English ha. So if you have to, we'll give also the example if you have to clean your uh, board, I'm cleaning uh, my board with the help of breath or I'm cleaning my mirror, I'm cleaning my sunglasses, the sound which I produce at that time uh, with the breath, that is exactly the ha sound. For example, if I have to clean it, I, I, I will say ha, or I can say ha, ha, ha. And that is the deepest uh, point there in, uh, there in the chest, near the, near the chest of this, where this sound is produced. Same is the case with Hamza. So uh, this is the part. But here we are dealing with Alif, Alif as a lengthened vowel. Are long, wrongly long while with ya and wall there it's exactly we don't have to go deep there in the throat and reduce it no when we just see their vocal cords we have to simply vibrate our vocal cords as you know in English when there is vibration of vocal cords the sound produced is always voiced sound is voiced sound and English vowels are always voiced. All vowels are voiced sounds. And in among consonants, some are voiced, some are uh, voiceless. And when there is no vibration uh, of these vocal cords, then it's a voiceless sound. So like alif, this a, uh, u, and ya, these are three sounds. We don't have to go there deep into the throat and we have to vibrate only uh, our vocal cords and then leave the passage and opening uh, our mouth and we have to uh, be very neutral not too much uh, exercise we have to uh, give to our lips that's in case of wow in case of elif we have to be a bit neutral than wow and then leave the passage and vibrate the vocal cords this is uh, for the elif now some more characteristics of this elif some characteristics are this are more in case of nouns, in case of nouns, for example, if we have three letter, three lettered nouns. So you may uh, ask me, some may think that uh, we don't go with the examples here in Arabic. In the next lecture, we will go with more examples, with more Arabic words. In this lecture, this was a bit introduction about Elif and the way and in uh, onwards uh, when we come across different alphabets like ba, like ta, like sa, like other words and other alphabets will come with examples also. When there is a three letter word and it ends with long alif, it ends with long while alif, long while alif. That very noun is called irregular noun, irregular noun. So, uh, as you know, the regular noun or the irregular noun. In the case of regular nouns, when we have to make the plurals, we add wow and we add noon. And then, like, we give fata to this. And when we have the irregular nouns, which we have almost 90% uh, nouns there in Arabic language, those are irregular nouns. And when have we have to make plural of these nouns, we have a different techniques. Uh, some of the nouns we have to remember and some of the nouns we have a bit uh, I can't say that too. Uh, the, I can't say that those techniques are very really fair techniques But a bit we can uh, exercise from them and we can make words So when three-lettered words uh, ends, 
ends with this long while alif that noun is irregular noun and this very noun which ends at this is called shortened noun this is called shortened noun same is the case with the verbs when there is a three letter word verb three lettered three lettered and it ends at long while alif it ends at long while alif this is also called irregular verb irregular verb irregular verb and we have a special name uh, to these very verbs these are called defective verbs these are called defective verbs these are called defective verbs so what does this mean here the shortened noun when the long while sound as we know the pronunciation some may uh, ask that the, when the pronunciation of this long while is a uh, as we see in english this is a uh, phonetic sound and why we call it a shortened noun when it comes there see dear uh, students when the when this alif long while comes there in case of regular or shortened nouns we actually don't pronounce fully this sound we don't pr pronounce it fully that's why we call it shortened noun and we shall not consider it as a root letter but it's a basic letter when we consider them as the first second and third letter it is one of the basic letter but not the root letter there uh, so we may come across this information later in uh, different courses different uh, lessons uh, of the grammar so we will conclude here uh, this very lesson and we will come also with the information about alif with more information later in next part till then ma salama